Oh, all right. We are recording. Okay. I've been a little nervous. I've been putting off this video because I don't ever script my videos. I this video is going to be the third video that I have created over the past six years uh, in concerns to my being a, a convicted and put on the sex offenders list as a juvenile. And I've slipped through the systems and it's followed me into my adulthood. It's caused me so many problems. Uh, my first video explains it all, explains the story, and then you can also go to Google Plus and type my name in uh, to the Google search bar and put Google Plus right next to it. I actually put the plus symbol instead of spelling the word out, and it'll bring me up, and you can click on it, and you can read my story on there. The story that of, of, of what's going on uh, will also be in this book I uh, that I've wrote I, I I've got to get it edited yet I've got to find somebody to do that and that's part of my uh, part of the reasoning for this video here this book I've got on my cover uh, a picture of myself and but uh, a distorted me you know that just I don't know makes it seem a little less personal maybe I don't know I uh, and at the moment I mean it's subject to change because I, I don't I mean when it's edited and everything but at the moment I've just titled the book abused and then marked for life a true story by Brian Dunker which is me I uh, in this book I started out with I uh, with two pieces of documentation proving that I was convicted as a juvenile proving that as long as I live in the state of Oklahoma I don't have to register and then I go on to share uh, parts of my childhood and my life story and and how it's affected me as a child and how it's affected me as an adult how I was abused as a child dramatically uh, so on and so forth it's basically uh, this part of it's basically going to be what you'll read on Google Plus. Then to uh, then I go on and I I I've created a lot of documents on my computer over the years. I uh, one of which uh, was a will that I wrote out in 2014. I've been very very suicidal on the brink so many times. I've tried and failed so many times, and, and you know it just it is what it is. Now I'm at the point that. I'm just, I, I failed so many times that although I, I still feel that I want I, I want this body to be dead, I probably won't try suicide again. I, at least I don't have any plans of it right at the moment or probably within the near future. But, uh, but that's only simply because I failed so many times and I'm just scared that I'll fail again and all that ever happens when I fail is I, you know, either up just in a bunch of pain, uh, in a hospital and extremely embarrassed, I uh, then end up in a mental hospital sometimes and it's just, anyway, I just failed too many times. Anyway, so uh, in this book that I put together, I include, I. Uh, uh, sheriff's reports, uh, reports that I've sent off to the FBI. Uh, I include uh, I, I, I actually include information, uh, at least in concerns to Illinois. And, and like I said, I'm still editing the book a bit, so I might end up adding some more information for those who wasn't, who's been convicted as a juvenile but wasn't convicted in Illinois or rather in other states so we'll see if I can remember to do that before I have this book edited and printed and published um, yes I smoke cigarettes it's the only thing uh, the only vice I have in this life to give me a little peace of mind I guess I don't know suit the heartache or whatever anyway 
Uh, so anyway, let's see, then I go on and I uh, provide a little bit of documentation from, uh, I had sent off for information from ACLU and uh, let's see, I provide a newspaper article where me and the next uh, lady I was with for two years was involved in a shooting. I, I include documentation of that and so on and so forth. I, then I go on to, I, I, yeah, part of it is I've, I've got a, an email in the book that shows that I've been permanently banned from Facebook. I, it, it says, your account has, we've determined you are uneligible to use Facebook. Your account has been removed for violating Facebook sections of right, Facebook statement of rights and responsibilities, uh, section 4.6. And then I have a copy of uh, the registration and account security page uh, from Facebook that goes along with the email showing uh, different things you can be violated for and, uh, and I've lit up in orange the number six there where it says you will not use Facebook if you are a convicted sex offender. Well in the state of Oklahoma I'm not a convicted sex offender. I have every legal right to be on Facebook. but. I uh, I have so many people that hate me because they don't understand my charge. If they you know if they'd only hear my story, out, but a lot of them don't care to, and so they've reported me just simply because of that label I have on me. I uh, I go then I go on to uh, I share, and this is this is all stuff that that I've researched over time because I mean everything in this book is who I have been, who I've transformed into so on and so forth, who I've been over the years, you know, at different points in times, and, and I mean, I just keep it real 100 here, and, you know, uh, one of the pages is uh, titled Reasons to Die and the Ridiculous Things People Say to Keep You from Killing Yourself, and then another one is Ways to Die. Don't ever take that as me condoning anybody to go and killing themselves or using any of these methods, uh, but I do include this in here. I uh, yes, I'm a little fearful that you know somebody might actually try to use this and then come after me for that. And it's not so much that I'm worried about them coming after me. It's that I don't want you to take your life because of something I said or wrote. I uh, please don't ever do that. I uh, but at the same time, via this video, I am going to express that uh, it is not my that is not my intention. Anyway. And also, these, this page of ways to die, it was stuff that I got off of Google anyway. So, it's not something that's original for me. Then after that, I go on to write, or to share a bunch of poems that I've wrote over the years. Uh, one's called The True Friendship Way. Another one is Road to Success, Pay It Forward. Oh, uh, not a clue. Living Your Life, Lord, What Has This World Come To, Karma, Insanity Plea, let's see, oh, I'm skipping some of them, let's see, another one is, I Will Lie Awake and Dream Tonight, oh, that's a, and this one's a very touching one, I, uh, well, they're all very touching, actually, you know. Uh, another one titled Go Cry to the Whiskey. Uh, another one we can, uh, let's see, Amazing, We Can Now Learn from Dogs. Uh, and then I go on to share a few, uh, uh, just little notes I've jotted down uh, of, of things that was just on my mind. You know, things to really be analyzed. Uh, you know, uh, you know, I mean, it really, this book, you could, you could use this book for, uh, if you're some sort of teacher, I don't know, it's, you know, you can tell your students, hey, analyze this part, and let's see the different conclusions we can come up to as to what he might have been thinking when he wrote this. Uh, uh, then I go on to share some different beliefs. Let's see, then I, I, I also include my entire juvenile rap sheet, uh, which is uh, 30 pages long, and it, you know from that you can kind of deduce uh, where I was at when 
when everything went down and, and the type of person my father was, the type of person I had become because of it. There's a, there's one uh, deal on there on my rap sheet. I, <laughs> a drug charge. That one was because I was, uh, oh, I guess, I don't know, 15, and I tried to uh, kill myself. I thought drinking a whole bottle of Windex would help me to, to do that. Anyway, so I ended up down at, uh, you know, uh, interrogation room at the police station, and I'm leaning back. I'm kind of high off the Windex, honestly. I'm leaning back in this chair, and I fell over. But when I fell over, something fell out from the chair from underneath. Well, I didn't know what it was, I, but it turned out to be uh, some sort of pipe with drugs in it. I don't know. I don't even remember what kind of drugs was, uh, what their test came back as it was, but I was uh, charged for that. Uh, because, oh, that was the other thing, was I was charged with it because at that age, I'm still a, uh, huh, neat, okay, stick it in my pocket, I'll, you know, play with it later, look at it, whatever, and so they come in, and for whatever reason, they decide to search me and find this pipe on me, and they're like, oh, so you've been doing drugs, huh? Huh? Whatever. Anyway, so, <laughs> there's another uh, charge on there for pinching my sister. That was another one of my dad's angles to get at me uh, because at that point I had stopped letting him abuse me. Well, oh, then I include a I, I, I printout of my first of all the comments on my first two YouTube videos in regards to this juvenile uh, sex uh, uh, offender thing. Uh, so I. For anybody who's commented on those two uh, YouTube videos, uh, you'll be able to find your uh, your screen name for YouTube within this book and the comments you've made. Uh, and just for the record, anybody who comments on this video as well, uh, you are giving me authorization by commenting to use that in any future books or material I write or anything I do uh, and, and this uh, the, the stuff on YouTube this is it's going to I'm trying to think of the best way to word this given that I don't script my videos out first I uh, basically it's kind of like it's kind of like a petition uh, for me because this book not only am I going to try to get this book published but this book is going to be my second attempt uh, for a petition of executive clemency to get a pardon or expungement I'm hoping for an expungement pardon the whole ho hoka bang get my get everything white clean is what I'm hoping for because everything on my adult record uh, every felony on my adult record is to do with that juvenile charge, failure to register, uh, and and then the because of catching a failure to register over this juvenile charge, that made me an adult felon. Well, by making me an adult felon, that gave the DA when Tanya had to shoot that man on our property, uh, even though it was self-defense. Unfortunately, the first officer on scene happened to be related to the guy we shot. Uh, and anyway, so. She went to jail. Well, I was, I kept going up to the DA's office and trying to figure things out. So then they decided, okay, we're going to get rid of this guy by putting him in jail as well. So they uh, trumped up this uh, possession of a firearm charge on me, which I didn't have possession of the firearm, but whatever, you know, uh, is what it is. And so, oh, and so anyway, now I have a felony on my adult record for. Uh, possession of a firearm after former felony conviction. Well, this all stems back to that juvenile record. I don't have a felony one that on my record that doesn't stem back to that juvenile case. So, in all reality, that juvenile case should have been squashed when I was a juvenile. Matter of fact, I found some documentation uh, here a while back, but I can't find the paperwork where I found it. Uh, sh stating that when I turned 17 or 18, uh, legally, if my attorney would have filled out some paperwork, uh, it was like one document. All he had to do was fill it out, sign it, send it in. And by doing so, 
I wouldn't have ever had to register again once I turned 18. But he did not file that paperwork. I was young. I didn't know anything of the law. I didn't know about that. And so I didn't know to ask him. Well, of course, now all these years later, it's too late. I can't go back and file that paperwork. Uh, it's past some sort of statute of limitations or something like that. I don't understand it. But anyway, uh, so if, if that one piece of paper would have been filed, I wouldn't have a felony one on my adult record. Uh, if that paperwork would have been filed, I wouldn't be plastered all over the internet as a sex offender. If that paperwork would have been filed, I wouldn't have had numerous attempts over the years on my life. Anyway, so going on, I'm tr I gotta hurry up and cut this on short. There's a lot, there's like, I, I, my book is like 130 pages long as of the moment. Uh, and it's uh, subject to change, you know, uh, to be lessened or, or uh, added to. Uh, I still got to go through the editing process yet. We'll see how that goes. Uh, really quickly, part of my inspiration for the book, aside from listening to encouragement, uh, encouraging advice from you good folks on YouTube who have just flooded me with love. I, I pre you don't even know how much appreciation, how much it's meant to me to be flooded with so much love from perfect strangers. Honestly, when I posted these videos, I completely expected to get bombarded with negativity, with people telling me to go off myself and blah, 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 blah. Okay, I never expected to receive such encouragement, such such love from from completely strangers. So for that, I appreciate that so much. And, and as a matter of fact, I am going to be, I, I'm going to use, whether it does me any good or not, I'm going to use your comments, your love, as a part of my petition I, for that to file, file for the second time for executive clemency. I don't know when I'll, when I'll have the funds again to be able to do that, though. I, uh, anyway, the other point of encouragement was this book called uh, Calling All Hearts. Uh, Child Abuse and Hope. Uh, the poetry is by Rodney Timms. Okay, and uh, he's 51 years. Well, he was 51 years old when he wrote the book. He was extremely abused as a child as well. Uh, let's see. Child abuse is a tragedy which impacts our country more deeply than people realize. Martina McBride, singer-songwriter. I, uh, I guess, uh, uh, signed off on this book as uh, she having approved of the book. Uh, anyway, <coughs> this particular book I was given by a couple and I, I, I've lost contact with them and I'm hoping to reestablish contact with them because I found some phone numbers within this book when I went back and started reading it again, but it's been a couple of two or three years ago since I, they gave me this book. But uh, this Rodney Timms, he is related to these people. And I, I, and I never even realized it till today. I've had this book for a couple of years, and I picked it up and read bits and pieces of it off and on. But I, I guess my friends, I, since they're related to the guy that wrote the book, they I, I got him to sign it for me. And anyway, that was kind of I put a smile on my face when I opened that cover up, and and just happened to realize that uh, this morning. But anyway, this book right here is a book of poetry. And the poetry that he shares in here is uh, uh, the same kind of stuff that I have written. And, but I didn't write my poetry based off of this book uh, because a lot of it I had wrote before I even was given this book. Now, there, uh, the, encour the encouragement I'm talking about due to this book, though, is the fact that I've been able to put this book together. Uh, and I... Uh, my cover photo, photo, it says, I live in constant fear of retribution for an unjust label put on me when I was a child. And I'm holding this sign that says this, that I, and so that's what the, the picture of for the cover photo. And then, of course, uh, underneath is uh, the title, Abused and then Marked for Life, A True Story by Brian Nucker. I want to encourage anyone who sees this video to, uh, Share it. Share this video all over the internet. Share it to tweet it. 
you uh, share it on Facebook, Instagram, I don't care. I need this video. I need, I need it to go public. I need to, I mean, I'm limited on funds. Uh, because of everything that's happened, uh, I've developed uh, some mental problems, uh, ADHD, PTSD, uh, PTSD extremely bad. Uh, and, and anyway, I, due to that and due to my criminal record now, it's been impossible for me to get work. So I'm actually on Social Security. And it takes everything I, I make every month to uh, pay my bills and I uh, and keep everything running properly in my home. Thank goodness the Lord has blessed me and I do own my home outright now and I do have another couple of nice vehicles and I'm doing okay uh, materialistically wise, but I don't have any money unfortunately. Oh, and that's another thing I, I also included in the book is uh, I, I just created a couple of days ago, I think it was the uh, day before yesterday, I created a GoFundMe account. Oh, I can't find the uh, the paper real. Oh, the flyer here. Anyway, created a GoFundMe account, so you can find find me on GoFundMe.com as well. Now, uh, I'm going to close because I'm already up to 22 minutes. I'm going to close real quick with this. If you are an abused child, currently going through abuse, okay, or you know of somebody who has been abused or is being abused and is still under the care of the abuser. There's a couple of different things you can do. Uh, Child Help USA National Child Abuse Hotline is 1-800-4-A-CHILD. 1-800-422-4453 or you can go to www.childhelpusa.org. Uh, in this book, uh, there's a uh, phone number and email address for Rodney Timms as well and I'm actually going to try to contact this man. I don't know that I'll have any luck with it but we're going to see. Uh, there's also the uh, website www.callingallhearts.com uh, This particular book is published and out on the market uh, where, whereas mine isn't so until I get mine out there I encourage you to pick you up a copy of this uh, and right before I started this video I did a research real quick the only place I've been able to find the book for sale at the precise moment is on amazon.com uh, I think the book is like six and a half bucks eBay I uh, sold out but they may get more on there I don't know so amazon.com had 18 in stock this morning that you could buy so I encourage you all to buy this. I mean, it's an excellent book. Oh, oh my gosh. If you have a heart at all within you, you will cry to the stories that are in this book. And then you'll rejoice at others. Uh, like there's one in here that just really took me away. Uh, titled A Son with a Gun. And the way it starts off, it, it's like, oh, oh my gosh, when the police knocked on these parents' door, you know, uh, long story short, they're telling the parents that he's in the hospital. Uh, he was carrying a gun and blah 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 and in the, in the end uh, you realize oh yes the kid was carrying a gun but he ended up using it for good thank God and which ended up he saved a cashier's life but got shot in the process he didn't die but the uh, the person that was robbing the, the store uh, was was just about to shoot the uh, cashier when he pulled out his gun and shot him and, and got uh, returned fire on him. Anyway, so the the very last thing is uh, it says, but the officer is speaking here. He says, but mister, please tell your son to not carry that gun anymore and maybe we won't ever have to knock on your front door or we won't ever again have to knock on your front door. It, it, you know, it's just, it's a really touching book. I really encourage you to read it. And uh, so anyway, I've got to end this now. I'm, this video has went way too long. Uh, any, any comments uh, or shares, uh, anything at all that you can do, uh, checking out my GoFundMe account, any of that would be greatly, greatly appreciated. All right, I love you folks. Uh, and anybody who believes in Christ, you are my brother and sister in Christ. You have a good day now.